sodium ion batteries are moving from the lab to the real world, but it's very early in this technology, so we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. In this video, we'll examine the pros and the cons of this new technology. So why can we use sodium for a battery? And for that matter, why do we use lithium to make a battery? In the periodic table of the elements, you'll notice that sodium is directly beneath lithium. And everything in this first column only has one electron in its outermost shell. Having this single electron in the outer shell is what allows this to work in a battery. When we charge the battery, the lithium loses an electron and becomes a lithium ion. The same thing for the sodium. It becomes a sodium ion with a positive charge. We charge the battery by putting an electrical current into it, and that splits the sodium into an electron and a sodium ion like we saw earlier. Well, the electrons travel down the wires from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, while the ions travel through the battery electrolyte from the cathode to the anode side. When you power something through the battery, the electrons and the ions move in the opposite direction from the anode to the cathode. When all of the electrons and the ions have returned to the cathode side, the battery is totally discharged. This is the same as a lithium battery, except the lithium battery obviously uses lithium ions instead of sodium ions. Sodium can also be used in another battery architecture called a flow battery, which is like a fuel cell, but we won't be covering those in this video. Sodium batteries can also be referred to as SIBs, which is an acronym for sodium ion batteries. The chemical symbol for the element sodium is Na or Na, and it comes from the Latin word natrium. So sodium batteries can also be referred to as Na ion or Na ion. So let's start with the pros. Compared to lithium, sodium is readily available all over the world. In fact, it's 500 times more abundant than lithium. It's commonly found in everyday table salt and it can be easily extracted from seawater. So the first of our pros is sodium is abundant and may cost less to produce. And I say may because the cost of sodium is only one of many costs of manufacturing a sodium battery and we are still in the very early stages of production. Now there are some caveats to the next few points. Sodium ion batteries may be easier to recycle. Unfortunately, because sodium is so plentiful, there may not be a financial incentive for companies to recycle. Hopefully, they'll do it for environmental reasons. The current generation of sodium ion batteries doesn't use nickel, cobalt, cadmium, or copper. Studies currently show that sodium ion batteries are generally better for the environment. However, they do produce high greenhouse gas emissions during production due to the amount of energy used during production because the anode is often hard carbon, which requires high heat to produce. Better technology and the use of green energy is expected to greatly reduce future greenhouse emissions. Also, since sodium is not the only substance used in the battery, the environmental impact depends on the other components of the battery. In a sodium battery, the positive terminal or the cathode will have a sodium-based chemistry. And this is just a partial list of some of the metals, compounds, and oxides that are being tested. The anode or the negative terminal is typically based on carbon, even though it can be based on some other things. Natron, a U.S.-based sodium battery company, uses iron and manganese in the cathode and just manganese in the anode. And these two elements are not only abundant, but they're often the byproducts of other manufacturing. Between the two sides is a porous separator, and the battery is filled with an electrolyte, which could be liquid or paste or even solid. Sodium ion batteries are more tolerant of temperature extremes. I covered this in the battery spec battle video. I'll leave a link at the end of this video and below in the description. Basically, sodium ion batteries can operate in extreme cold. 
and also in extreme hot temperatures, they have less potential for thermal runaway. These batteries can also be discharged all the way down to zero volts, so they can be transported and stored without being treated as a hazardous material. Now, let's look at some cons. Sodium ion batteries typically have a lower energy density compared to lithium ion. And this refers to both a volumetric, which means these batteries need to be larger, and also gravimetric energy density, which means typically these batteries need to be heavier. However, much progress has been made. Several manufacturers are now reaching 200 watt hours per kilogram. Next, let's look at the larger voltage range of sodium ion batteries. I also went over this in more detail in the battery specs battle video. Sodium ion batteries use a much wider voltage range, much higher and lower than what is normally found in a lithium iron phosphate battery, which means they are outside of the range of the normal inverter or charger that we're using currently. So the manufacturers will have to update their firmware and software to be able to operate in this wider range. Another potential problem, let's say you start with a full battery and you're at about 60 volts. As that voltage drops down to say maybe 30 volts, it's going to take twice the current to power that same load, which means you're gonna need much larger wiring as well as larger terminals, bus bars, breakers, etc. And last on our list of cons, we're still in the very early stages of sodium ion batteries. There will be still many technological changes, plus the manufacturers have to get this up to scale, and they'll have to develop new supply chains. Sodium ion batteries are already available on the market, but many of the big manufacturers have announced they have new sodium ion batteries coming soon. BYD announced that the Seagull would be one of the first automobiles to have a sodium ion battery. However, it was first launched in 2023 with a lithium iron phosphate battery. In 2024, the company did break ground on a sodium ion factory. CATL announced their Freevoy super hybrid battery, which uses both lithium and sodium cells in the same battery pack. This is actually being used currently in several vehicles, and another 30 manufacturers plan to use this in the very near future. Other companies to watch in this space include Altris and Natron Energy. Natron is already shipping a battery with some pretty incredible specs. Okay, I think for a short while we're still looking at lithium iron phosphate batteries for solar home energy use. Uh, but this is a space we're going to have to watch with the sodium ion batteries. I think I covered everything in the pros and cons, but if I missed something or I'm just wrong, let me know down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.